What's up guys, Anthony Tackett. Today I'm going to be doing a little maintenance on the Monoprice Select Mini. And before I get going, I do want to just kind of urge you to be safe when you are working on machinery. Make sure it's turned off, make sure it's unplugged, uh, and you should be good to go. Today I am going to be using primarily this 3-in-1 PTFE lubricant. And I'm also, in the harder to reach places, going to be using a silicone spray. Now I would recommend the Teflon lubricant over the silicone, but the Y-axis on the Monoprice Select Mini is a little harder to get to. It's inside this uh, steel enclosure and I'm not really looking to open all that up and, and get into that just to get to those bearings. So I will be using this, but this particular product does dry and will not attract dirt and that's the big thing you want to avoid when you are lubricating something is using a product that's going to attract dirt and dust and things and just gunk stuff up so let's go ahead and get started okay so like I said I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine off you can see here a little bit that it is on so I'll go around in the back of the machine and there's your power switch I will turn that off and I will go ahead and disconnect the power cable. I do have some tape on the bed. I'll go ahead and remove that because I will be applying new tape once the maintenance is complete. I also have some cork pieces that I have cut and placed underneath the heated bed. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of push those out from the other side. I'll grab those and set those aside for later. Okay, now that the tape is removed, the cork is out, and the machine is off and unplugged, I can go ahead and just blow off all of the loose dust. It's kind of nice outside, so you can see, anyway, I'm kind of set up at the end of my shop on my table saw. I'm going to use compressed air to kind of blow everything out really well. And then we will go ahead and start lubricating the different moving points on the machine. Now I will say that I did go ahead and do a cold pull so everything in the hot end assembly is clean there's no leftover filament. I'm not going to do a video on how to do a cold pull on a machine. There are tons of other videos out there that explain it really really well. I happen to follow one to clean this machine out so uh, I'll find one put a link to the video in the description so that you can reference that when you are cleaning out your machine as well. So since this is my workshop I have my compressor over in the corner and I have some air running out to this hose and this nozzle, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of blow the thing out. So the next thing I want to do is take these shop towels, rip them down into little strips, and run these along the X, Y, and Z axis where I can just to make sure that all the rails and things are clean and free of debris before I lubricate. And, and I'll just quickly wipe those down. So the rails for the Y axis are going to be a lot more difficult to get to and I don't think I'm actually going to be able to get to them. Get a flashlight in here. There we go. So they're inside this enclosure and there are would appear to be at least two or three of them. So that's why I have this can of WD-40 silicone so that I can use this extension on the nozzle to get in there and just make sure that everything is nice and, and lubricated. So as far as lubrication points go on the x-axis, I'm going to lubricate the, the bearings or just outside of the bearings just to make sure that that rod, these two rods get coated. Um, but also there are a few different pulleys that the belt rides against and I'm going to put a little drop on those as well. Underneath the bed on the Z axis I'm just going to make sure that the the rods are nice and coated so I'll probably put a drop right in front of this bearing and work the bed back and forth to make sure everything is evenly coated with the PTFE lubricant. And like I said earlier, for the y-axis inside the enclosure, I'm just going to try and get where I can, and then I'll turn the machine on, uh, move the y-axis up and down, and make sure everything is smooth.
So now that I'm confident that I got all of the main pieces lubricated, I'm going to go ahead and turn the machine back on. And I'm going to go over using the wheel to move. And the first thing I'm going to hop over to is the Y axis and I told you wrong I've been using Y and Z incorrectly so I'm going to adjust the Z axis and essentially that's just going to lower that arm along the Z axis that I was calling the Y axis so my apologies there and you know what so I can go ahead and click this again and just go ahead and tell it to go home so home axis I'll hit that and it'll just kind of do its thing all by itself that's way smarter. So I'll run that up and down a couple times and what that'll do is just make sure that that lubrication is, is spread out nice and evenly. Okay guys, so that about does it for this video. If this is your first time to my channel, thanks for stopping by. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date on the latest and greatest content. If you like this video, please go ahead and let me know and hit that like button below. It lets me know that you dig it and you want me to make more content like this. You might be able to see below that I have a spool of Hatchbox wood filament. This was sent to me by my buddy Joe, and being a woodworker, you better believe I'm going to do a full review on this. I'm going to sand it and stain it and see how it holds up. So I'm going to go ahead, sign off, and enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. See you guys.